Malaysia and Vietnam agreed to look for new economic opportunities. Firefighters extinguished 70% of forest fire in Johor. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2 with me, Renee Fong. The Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah was accorded a state welcome today at the Bogor Presidential Palace in conjunction with His Majesty's state visit to Indonesia. The King and the Raja Pemaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria arrived at the palace at 10:30 a.m and were welcomed by Indonesian President Joko Widodo, popularly known as Joko Wi, and his wife Iriana Joko Widodo. Al Sultan Abdullah then took the salute before the Indonesian Presidential Security Force, after which the Negaraku and the Indonesia Raya Indonesian National Anthem were played. His Majesty then inspected a guard of honour. The King and Jokowi then held discussions at a veranda talk at the palace, after which bilateral discussions were held between the Malaysian and Indonesian entourages. Jokowi, who won the 2019 presidential election for the second term, accompanied Al Sultan Abdullah as His Majesty planted a Damar sapling. The Indonesian president also drove the king in a buggy on a tour of the grounds of the Bogor Presidential Palace. The Malaysian entourage includes Economic Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali as the minister in attendance, as well as officials from Istana Negara, the Foreign Ministry and the Prime Minister's Department. Malaysia and Vietnam agreed to strengthen cooperation and look for new economic opportunities to reduce trade imbalance between the two ASEAN countries. In a joint press conference, Prime Minister Tunak Mahathir Mohamad and his Vietnamese counterpart Nguyen Xuan Phuc said both countries agreed to strengthen strategic cooperation in various sectors including defence, security, marine and fisheries, education, labour and tourism. Both premiers also agreed to encourage investments in infrastructure, energy, high-tech agriculture, aquaculture, transport and logistics, as well as facilitate the networking of businesses in finding new opportunities. Malaysia would like to see the trade grow in size, but uh, with more imports by Malaysia from Vietnam in order to, to, to reduce the, the imbalance in the trade between our two countries. The matter was announced at a joint press conference by Tun Dr. Mahathir and Nguyen after a delegation meeting today. Tun Dr. Mahathir said Malaysia and Vietnam agreed to work together within ASEAN and make use of the economic bloc to grow their economies and to tackle problems in the world and the region in particular. On overlapping claims between the two countries, Tunak the Mahathir said disputes should be resolved in a peaceful manner through negotiations. There are many other areas where we agree and there are really few areas where we disagree or rather where there is some dispute. But all this can be resolved between us in a friendly manner. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir urged Malaysian investors doing business around the world to remain clean and respectable businessmen by avoiding any form of corruption in their business activities. We want Malaysians to be respected and they will be respected if they do business properly. Uh, the, one of the problems that we face in doing business in other countries is of course corruption. The temptation to corrupt is very strong, but please avoid that. Malaysians must be clean businessmen. 
Tunak the Mahathir said Malaysians must be businessmen who do not depend on corruption, who provide good service, are of good behaviour and are friendly. He also urged Malaysian businessmen and investors operating overseas to contribute to the national economy. Tunak the Mahathir urged Malaysian businessmen and investors to understand the way of doing things in the countries where they operate, as well as the culture, rules and regulations and laws to expand business opportunities. Seventy percent of a 16-hectare forest fire along Jalan Tanjung Kupang, Kampung Pekajang Gelang Patah Johor, has been successfully extinguished. According to Fire and Rescue Department Zone 1 Chief Mohamed Faisal Slamat, the rescuers have managed to build a three-kilometre trench to prevent the fire from spreading. Uh, kesuruhan anggota dan, dan daerah agensi lah uh, lebih kurang 140 140 anggota aset-aset kita ada ban, uh, kita punya kekuatan uh, tanker kita ada uh, 6 sekat ni uh, ada juga di satu junta LFRT untuk kita membuat attacking pemadaman jika ada spot-spot baru uh, kita ada pakai 5 jenis pam lah Sekarang ni ada bantuan daripada Jabatan Sariran juga. Uh, Eskavator kita ada 8. Sehingga semalam ada 8. Mungkin hari ini bertambah untuk kita bantu membuat kerja-kerja uh, menjari palit. Lah. Since Wednesday, a total of 140 personnel from various agencies were involved in the firefighting operation of the forest fire. Mohamed Faisal reiterated that his team were constantly on standby and quick to take action to prevent the flames from spreading to local residents. Two schools affected by the forest fire in Gelang Pata have been advised to remain closed until the situation improves. State Local Government Urban Wellbeing and Environment Committee Chairman Tan Chen Chun said that the Sekolah Kebangsaan Tanjung Adang and Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Tanjung Adang had been ordered to close for two days from yesterday. He said based on yesterday's check, the forest fire situation was still critical. The decision was also based on recent decree by the Regent of Johor, Tunku Ismail Sultan Ibrahim, who wished for the two schools to be closed due to their proximity to the forest fire area believed could adversely affect the health of the students, teachers and staff. Still on the same matter, Johor Local Government Urban Wellbeing and Environment Committee Chairman Tan Chen Chun said that waste dumped illegally at abandoned land is among the causes of open burning in Johor. Nyeru kepada semua uh, pemilik tanah yang di mana tanah mereka yang terbiar kosong atau uh, tidak diusahakan supaya sentiasa memantau keadaan tanah mereka untuk tidak dijadikan sebagai tapak pelupusan uh, sampah haram. Nah. Ya, dan uh, sekiranya berlaku, kita akan ambil tindakan juga mengikut kanun-kanun uh, negara KPN di mana uh, uh, ada tanah yang berkenaan yang telah dikenakan syarat dan, dan sekiranya dijadikan uh, sebagai tapak pemburangan sampah, dia akan, uh, kita akan mengambil tindakan mengikut undang-undang yang sedia ada. Lah. A total of 296 abandoned land spots have been identified as having potential for open burning activities. Former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak's stepson, Riza Shahriz Abdul Aziz, has applied to transfer his trial consisting five charges of money laundering involving 248.17 million US dollars from one Malaysia development Berhad 1MDB to the Kuala Lumpur High Court from the Sessions Court. Riza's lawyer, Shazwani Muhammad Zawawi, said the application to transfer the case was filed at the High Court last 16th August on the grounds that the trial would affect his constitutional rights and that it would take a long time if the case goes on trial at the Sessions Court where he is charged. 
Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib, however, filed an objection to the transfer application on the grounds that it does not involve a constitutional issue. The case is not that complex and the trial would not take a long time at the Sessions Court. The case came out for case management before High Court Deputy Registrar Mahoyuddin Matsum today. He then fixed the hearing of the application before Justice Muhammad Nazla Muhammad Ghazali on 23rd September. It was previously reported that Sessions Court Judge Rosina Ayub had already fixed trial dates for the case from 6th to 9th and 13th to 16th January next year. Riza is accused of receiving the 1MDB linked funds through the bank accounts of Hollywood production house Red Granite Productions Incorporated, which he co founded and was itself charged in the U.S. for misappropriating monies from the investment fund between 12 April 2011 and 14 November 2012. The High Court will deliver its decision in Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak's SRC International Sunan Berhad trial on 11th November. Justice Muhammad Nazlan Muhammad Ghazali set the date today as Attorney General Tommy Thomas prepares to formally close the prosecution's case against the former Prime Minister. The prosecution's case against Datuk Sri Najib, who is charged with abusing 42 million ringgit in funds from state owned SRC International Sunan Berhad, has ended after 57 days. Thomas also said the prosecution has a total of 66 witnesses from a list to offer if defence is called next. Datuk Sri Najib's SRC international trial began on 3rd April this year with the prosecution calling 57 witnesses to the stand. Those called included former Ambank relationship manager Joanna Yu Gingping, former second finance minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Husni Muhammad Hanazla, former SRC international board chairman Tan Sri Ismi Ismail and Datuk Azian Muhammad Noh, who is former retirement fund incorporated KWAP chief executive. Out of the seven charges that Sri Najib faced, the Pekan MP is accused of committing three counts of criminal breach of trust over a total 42 million ringgit of SRC international funds. While entrusted with his control as the Prime Minister and Finance Minister then, and a separate charge under an anti-corruption law of abusing the same positions for self-gratification of the same sum. The remaining three of the seven charges are for allegedly money laundering the same total sum of 42 million ringgit. Three men believed to be foreigners and members of the notorious Gang Tebo involved in a spate of robberies as well as house and factory break-in cases were killed in a shootout with the police at the Alma Light Industrial Area in Bukit Metajam, Pulau Pinang. Pulau Pinang Police Chief Datuk T. Narena Sagaran said the 2am incident which took place at Jalan Pala 6 Permatang Tinggi Industrial Area unfolded when the trio were in the midst of breaking into a factory. Commenting further on the incident, Dato Nare Nagasaran said the three suspects, upon realising that police had caught up with them, fled the scene in their car. While making their getaway, the suspects began shooting at the police, who returned fire on the assailants, killing all three on the spot. Obstable is what they do is they either come through the rear of the factory or they overwhelm the guard who is at, uh, uh, guarding the premise, then they go up the roof, then they straight come into the office uh, of, of uh, the premise, and then what they will do is they will try to force open the safe. The Pulau Pinang police chief added that it was learned that the trio were part of a gang which were active in breaking into factories in the area. They were believed to be involved in at least five previous breaking and entering cases. Apart from a gun, police also found a machete and other tools used in breaking into the factory in the suspect's car. The Immigration Department today confirmed it arrested 31 illegal immigrants from the Philippines in an operation at the Kiamsam Refugee Settlement Scheme, Labuan, last Saturday. Labuan Immigrant Director Asani Latjani said the 10 men, 10 women and 11 children aged between 5 and 55 were picked up in the operation conducted from 1.30am to 2.30am by 35 enforcement personnel. 
According to Asani, all the immigrants were sent to the temporary detention center in Kimanis Papar Sabah for further action, including deportation. In addition, he said all of them are being remanded for 14 days and are being investigated under Section 6, Subsection 1 of the Immigration Act. It is learned that the Kiamsam Refugee Settlement Scheme was built more than a decade ago and the raid was not the first at the location. NGOs have urged the authorities to review the settlement status as some of the residents have been granted permanent resident status. Coming up next, further liberalisation needed to boost general insurance industry. Welcome back. The general insurance industry is set to witness challenges ahead after recording a 1.4% drop in gross direct premiums to 8.915 billion ringgit in the first half of 2019. General Insurance Association of Malaysia PM Chief Executive Officer Mark Lim said further liberalisation is needed to boost the industry. In fact, the our look is that the trade tension between China and the US mm. is not fully played out yet. Mm. So yeah. the next six months, we could even face more challenges. Mm. Because we contracted 1.4% in the first half this year. Mm. So the recovery for the next six months will be quite a challenge. Mm. Speaking to the media after the half-year 2019 general insurance industry results presentation in Kuala Lumpur, he said PM in Bank Negara Malaysia are working closely on the next phase of further opening up the industry. For the second largest market, fire insurance grew 2.5% to 1.73 billion ringgit, while motor insurance, the dominant class, was relatively flat with a marginal decline of 0.2% at 4.18 billion ringgit. Those at high risk of being exposed to hepatitis B and hepatitis C should start getting themselves screened. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr Zulkifli Ahmad said this follows a rising in trend in both diseases over the past few years. He said the prevalence of hepatitis B and hepatitis C among Malaysians is about 1.9% out of 11,000 people. Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli said this is based on the data obtained from the free screening provided by the Ministry for Malaysians and all public health facilities since July in conjunction with World Hepatitis Day. Untuk mengetahuan semua, kita membuat uh, saringan ini dengan cara percuma. Ya? Uh, saya tak pasti kalau negara lain memberikannya cara percuma. But I think uh, we are, you know, we are very committed. We are sangat committed untuk uh, membuat saringan ini dan uh, membuat capaian dan coverage yang terbaik yang terbaik mungkin yang dapat kita lakukan. He said this at the ministry's monthly assembly today, in conjunction with the World Hepatitis Day, which carries the theme "Finding the Missing Millions." The ministry has launched the national strategic plan on viral hepatitis. The Malaysian Department of Quarantine and Inspection Services markets had seized 1.27 tonne of agricultural and food products worth about 3,500 ringgit at the Immigration, Customs, Quarantine and Security Complex ICQS, Durian Burung, Padang Terap. Makis Kedah State Director P. Lili Rosalyn said the seizure was made following the arrest of a lorry that brought the goods at about 1.30 p.m. after the driver failed to show valid documents from Marquis. A total of 200 kg of chicken ball, 150 kg of sausage and pork, 100 kg of fish, 100 kg of chicken and frozen duck was found on the truck upon inspection. The lorry also carried 100 kg of lemongrass, 120 kg of goats, 70 kg of chili and 70 kg of lime leaves without a valid document, such as an import permit IP issued by our department, she said in a statement today. She said the importer had also failed to produce documents such as silogenetic certificates from the original country and health certificates. The case was being investigated under Section 11, Subsection 1, of the Quarantine Services and Inspection Services Act 2011, where the conviction could be fined not more than 100,000 ringgit or imprisonment not exceeding six years or both. 
Super League champions Johor Darul Ta'zim JDT defeated Nepal in a friendly match at the Tan Sri Datuk Haji Yasan Yunus Stadium in Larkin, Johor Bahru. The match held was part of Nepal's preparations for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers, which will begin in the first week of September. The only goal of the game came in the third minute when Argentine forward Nicolas Alberto Fernandez, who plays for JDT2 in the Malaysia Premier League, found the back of the net. The six-time Malaysia Super League champions, comprising mostly of their reserve stars, held on for the 1-0 lead, keeping out attacks from Nepal for the remainder of the game. Nepal, coached by Johan Kalin, will open their campaign in the 2022 FIFA World Cup and 2023 AFC Asian Cup joint qualifier second round against Kuwait, away at the Jaiba Al Hamad International Stadium on 5th September. Malaysia will play away to Indonesia in the opening match of their Group G World Cup Asian Cup qualifying campaign. And Harimau Malaya boss Tan Cheng Ho wants his charges to stay calm on 5th September. Malaysia can expect no warm welcome when they travel to Jakarta next month. And for this reason, Cheng Ho wants his men to focus on playing football. He said the first match of any competition is very important to a team's confidence level, but it's never easy to play at the Galora Boncarno main stadium. I think kita selaras dengan apa yang DNA lancarkan oleh FM lah. So far, I think kita yang saraf bermain corak permainan sedemikian dan saya harap kita akan terus. Uh, improve lagi lagi masa hadapan dan of course uh, this is the way untuk uh, modern football dan saya harap pemain-pemain pun boleh adapt cepat dan uh, yang penting I think coming to national team uh, more on the result orientation lah. Ask about his charges condition on the second day of centralized training, the former Kedah boss revealed that winger Muhammadu Sumaresh still needs to recover from his recent club obligations. Sumaresh didn't play for Pahang against Sabah due to groin strain and hasn't been training regularly for almost two weeks. His condition is being monitored as his presence play a positive role to the rest of his teammates, which is a massive impact to the team's morale. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Malaysia and Vietnam agree to look for new economic opportunities and encourage investments. We'll be back tomorrow at 12.30 with more updates. Till then, I'm Renee Loretta Fung. Have a pleasant evening.